So uh, it will be having two surfaces. So the outer, so you can see over here the outer and the superior surface is rounded and it is smooth because it is covered by diaphragm. This surface is called diaphragmatic surface. Passage, diaphragmatic surface. Yes? And inside we call it this surface will be more or less it will be vertical. If you take a cut section of fever, it will be like this. Yes, so this is visceral surface which is rough because there are a lot of indentations. For like for example, I already told, yes, there are places where here kidney will be stuck, supravenal gland, yes, here will be what? Yes, right body flexure, here will be duodenum, here will be gastro, here will be esophagus, so they are pressed. And also we have some, some other structures here, so they are rough. So the supra and so you can call it. Antero superior part is diaphragmatic. Keep it in mind. Upper, behind, side, anterior. All these sides are covered by diaphragm. Why? It is going inside the dome. Dome is like this. Yes. You should know that. There are, how many parts are there for diaphragm? Diaphragm is a structure which is? Four parts. Three parts. Okay. So we call it musculus frames, yes? So it's not just muscle, because it is a combination of muscle slings with central, central tendon, yes? So you can call it what musculo tendinous organ it is. And you can understand there's lumbar part, there's costal part, and there's sternal part. In between you'll be finding what gaps? They are triangles, yes? For example, lumbocostal triangle. Anterior two will be there. Posterior side there will be what? So, sternocostal triangle there will be two, and posterior there will be two lumbocostal triangles. And left sternocostal triangle will be called larynx space, posterior lumbar costal triangle will be called tipped space, yes, or tipped space, yes, through where you can get what diaphragmatic hernia. It can push and it can come out. Of. For example, in case of congenital cases. So, here what diaphragm is forming this way, yes, because they attach this way, and here liver is pushed inside. So you can see it's covering. So posterior also will come, anterior also will come, superior also will come, lateral also will come. Understood? On top of that, what will be sitting? Lung will be there. On top of that, uh, heart will be there. On the left side, it will be heart, and it will be covered by lung. Understood? And you see there will be surface what? It is coming like this, yes. So this is a space between what? This is costal cartilage and this is diaphragmatic recess in between you can get through and lung. So it is giving a cushion also. That's why this comes up to 10th, yes, costal cartilage, um, 10th costa or rib you can go. So if you want to take a puncture or biopsy of liver, then you have to do below 10th. Otherwise what? You can damage pleura, you can enter into pleura. That's why we do, yes, metaxillary line you take, you calculate 10th one below that you will be doing. Understood? Well, and yeah, so let's go. So it is usually called intraperitoneal organ, except for one part. Usually, it is not that big. Yes, it's called what area? Bare area or naked area. They call it bare. Peritoneum is not covering liver. So liver will be covered from all the sides by peritoneum. So it will be called intraperitoneal organ. And only in the posterior, inferior part, there is a small area. I'll show you can see over here, like this. Yeah. Where from this side it will be covering and coming, and it will be forming the posterior border of what coronary ligament. From anterior side it will be covering and coming, it will form what anterior leaflet of coronary ligament. They both will join together, it will form right triangular ligament. Yes, in between you get a gap. So here it is not covering. Up it will be diaphragm below this part. We call it what bare area, area nuda or nude area. Understood? <coughs> And inside, if you see, the condensed layer, the outer layer of liver is called glissens capsule. So this will be what, so keep it in mind, if there is any infection inside liver, you will not get pain. So anything which is causing what, liver is swelling up and causing what, distension of this glissens capsule, then you get what, pain. For example, rupture of liver, you will get pain. Why? Glissens capsule will rupture. Yes? Spino, sorry, like spinomegaly, here you call it what? Hepatomegaly, yes? In case of hepatomegaly, it is not necessary, you have to get pain. 
But sometimes it will go to a big vein which will stretch this capsule, you can get pain. Yes? Pain. Necrosis of this part, capsule, you will get pain. Understood? Otherwise, there will be no pain. Clear? So from GIT you get pain. Yes? There are different reasons. First of all, there are visceral pain receptors. Yes? Burning pain or if there is inflammation, it will be activating pain receptors. I told you it is called what? Nociception. Visceral nociception. But outside we have what? Peritoneum. Peritoneum is pain sensitive. Also it is sensitive for stretching. In case of stretching, you will get dull pain. Oh, another one type of pain is there, we call it spasmodic pain. When there is increased peristalsis, too much, we call it what? Spasmo, spasmodic action or spasmodic movement. Means it's not properly like, for example, up to down, esophagus is moving the food, yes, regularly and smooth, there will be no pain. If it is doing it with a lot of, what? A lot of very high pressure, it can cause pain. It is called spasmodic action. A spasmodic movement. So, in case of liver, liver diseases, you can get pain. In the liver, if you get any pathology inside liver, you will not get pain. When you will get pain, only it will include capsules. So, it should be either superficial or it should swell up or it should stretch up. Otherwise, you won't get pain. Understood? That's why, in case of liver diseases, usually sometimes you won't find it out. Even abscess is there inside liver. You will get fever, but you will not get pain. Why? Abscess will be sitting inside. Amoebic abscess. Amoeba will go and sit here. It will go. But pain will not come unless it will stretch this capsule. Understood? For in diseases of liver, you will get pain. It is spasmodic pain because it is connected with what? Bile ducts. Bile ducts are surrounded by smooth muscle. In case of liver pathology, it will cause what? Binary dyskinesia, which will lead to what? Spasmodic movement. You will get what? Pain. Spasmodic pain in the area of. Liver. So it is problem with what? Binary. Clear? So listen just to keep it in mind. So you can see this. Yes? So diaphragmatic surface. So conventionally, we divide liver into right lobe and left lobe through where falciform ligament is attached to our So falciform ligament is again a peritoneal forming which will come this way. Yes? And it will attach to what? Starting from umbilicus, it will be attaching. Down, yes, umbilicus will be there, so it will be attaching and it will be coming and it is what? Attaching to the anterior abdominal wall. Then it is coming this way and the upper part of liver it is dividing into two. So this ligament, which is having two layers, we call it what? Falciform ligament. Understood? So falciform ligament will be attaching like this and anterior is what? Now here, anterior abdominal wall. From starting from the point where umbilicus is there and it will be attached up to the upper border of liver. Understood? So once it is coming to the upper border, it will divide into two. Once it is dividing this way and this way, it is going to form what two ligaments we call it what I already told you what coronary ligament. So from this side it will be anterior leaflet of coronary ligament. From posterior side also, it will come, yes. From posterior surface again, here what is coming? Peritoneum. Here also it will come like this up. Understood? So if you see from up, if I check where we have, okay, you can see from up. Yes? Understood? So this is right lobe, this is left lobe. Now falciform ligament is opening here, and from posterior surface also we are getting what? Peritoneum, which is coming this way. Now you can understand there are two leaflets or lips of what ligament? This is going to be. Yes, coronary ligament. So this coronary ligament is what having two leaves. Between two leaves you have a space. We call it what? Bare area or area nodal. So it will be coming to here. So if you see coronary ligament, anterior leaf will be given by what? Anterior leaf and from ligament will separate. Left, it will separate. Posterior say you will get what? Yes, again peritoneum will come. So all together it will fuse and form. Here it is coronal ligament, here it is coronal ligament. Once they are fusing together towards the end, it will produce what? Left and right triangular ligament. And up it will be connected to diaphragm. So in between diaphragm at this level you have a gap. Yes? So this is called what? Barrier. Understood now? Yes? Clear? 
And in the free border of falciform ligament, you have a ligamentum teres hepatis. So it is called round ligament of hepatis or liver because there is one more ligament. We call it what? Round ligament of uterus. Yes? So here, this is what? Origin is what? Embryology. Umbilical vein. So I told you umbilical vein will come through umbilical cord. So where it should come through umbilical. So it will be attached to umbilical through that. This will run. Yes, it will run through that, and it will come behind. Yes. So keep it in mind that for adult life we don't need umbilical vein. So they will be what? They will become. They will be obliterated. They will become a ligament. What is this ligament? This is ligament of terror. Yes. Now it is running in the free border of ligament of falciparum, and it is entering this. What? And in the time of fetus, I told you what? This umbilical vein will enter liver and it will go up and it will connect to inferior vena cava. So in this case, we call it what? Ligamentum. Now it is ligamentum venosum. Before it was called what? Ductus venosum. Yes? Ductus venosum, which was found by Arantius. That's why it's called what? Ductus venosum Arantius. Now we are adult. Now what is happening? This round ligament is coming in the same way. Why? It is already obliterated, it became ligament. It is attaching and it is going up. And here, what was there earlier? It was ductus venosus. And now this is obliterated. So we call it what? Ligamentum venosus. It will go and connect through again a line to inferior vena cava. We will see what is this fold or what is this sulcus we call. What is this sulcus? I will explain. Okay? Clear? This is clear. So anterior side. Yes? You can understand. Yes? The peritoneal ligament. So these are not true ligament. These are peritoneal ligament. Yes? It will cause a reflection. We call it what? We call it falciform ligament. It will attach from where? From umbilicus. Why? Is it giving a cover for? Ligamentum rotundo. Oh? Sorry. So ligamentum terror. So we call it for round ligament. So it is covering it, it is coming and yes, in the upper border it will diverge. So once it is diverging, it is going to give anterior lip for coronary ligament. Anterior so the left and right. Clear? From posterior side, the peritoneum which is coming, which will give you the posterior lip of left and right coronary. Once it is going to the end, we call it triangular ligament. It will have a chap. So in between there is a gap, we call it what? Bare area. If you see in the posterior border, this is attached. Why it is? Yes, it is a derivative which is obliterated. Yes, we call it what? Umbilical vein. Now we don't need it. Yes, it is running and it is entering this sulcus. We call it umbilical sulcus. And it goes up before it was ligamentum venosus. Before it was yes, ductus venosus. Now it becomes ligamentum venosus. Understood? Clear? So, now you can see, conventionally we say in anatomy, after falciform ligament separate the liver superiorly, superficially, yes, this is called what? Left lobe and this is called right lobe. But this is not true classification because real lobe classification will come only after you check the blood supply. Now if you see the blood supply of this and this much will be same. Because you should know that, yes, inside portal vein will come, hepatic artery will come, they will divide into two lines from here. So if you run the line through here, we call it Cantley line, which is running through at the fundus of bladder and to the right side of inferior nakawa. This much is called real left lobe, this much is called real right lobe. So what is this line? We call it Cantley line. I don't know. Can't be. Okay. So it will run this way. Okay. You can see over here. Now they are putting what? <coughs> over here actually we will be having. Vesica fella, or we call it what? Gallbladder. This sulcus or this line, which I already told you, are through here. 
what ligamentum teres enters and it goes up and from here what will be lying ligamentum venosum venosum will lie and it will connect to inferior vena cava this sulcus will be called what umbilical sulcus or umbilical fissure understood another one name will be what left sagittal fissure okay this will be a fissure you can find over here next one right sagittal fissure is actually not exact fissure here it will be coming what you can find where you will be finding here what it will be there over here you will be finding gold bladder through the base of gold bladder you run this and up you will be running to the right side of inferior vena cava yes you run this way this line is what cat leaf line yes you are running but it is an imaginary line we are saying what it is called right sagittal fissure it can be called oh cantilever line i don't know it will be written here somewhere i'll show you okay right. so if you see that in left sagittal fissure or we call it a umbilical fissure or umbilical sulcus what will be lodged inside it will be yes ligament of teres it was in what in fetal line it was umbilical vein it gets connected also to what portal vein but it goes up as what ductus venosus now we are already born we don't need all these things they are getting obliterated now in adult life if they ask you it is not umbilical vein it will be what ligamentum yes teres up will be ligamentum venosus understood so this is the line which i am giving you this is the line this is what the plane which is going to separate what really portal vein and hepatic artery separates right and left in this line not this line so if you ask surgically or if you ask functionally what is right lobe only at this is right lobe this is left lobe pura okay okay fine you can see that this line we are just saying uh, show you what is conard segments conard was a surgeon he was an anatomist from france and how he separate this eight segments actually four segment actually so i show you that line what it is yes It is not right now. Then we will go further in any form. Okay. Behind, once you come, you will be having also two more lobes. So anterior, you have conventionally. This is right lobe. This is left lobe. Now you can see over here. This is what again what fissure? Umbilical fissure below. This is called porta hepatis or hilum of liver. And on the right side, we have fossa for. Vesica fellae or gold bladder. So it is forming what a boundary. What is coming over here? This part of liver looks what quadrate or rectangular. We call it what lobus quadratus or quadrate liver. So you understood the border? Yes. From up it will be what where ligamentum venosum is attached. So it is also what upper end of umbilical fissure or left sagittal fissure. on the right side you have fossa for in okay. inferior vena cava inferiorly you will have what porta hepatis upper you will have a small lobe we call it what caudate lobe so keep it in mind cauda means it should come down because it is tail but the name is given not because of that this gives a small process we call it what caudate process it looks like what tail so we kept the name it is caudate lobe many people are confused that this is caudate lobe this is quadrate lobe this is caudate lobe okay all the parts of liver will be connected and they will be draining through three big hepatic vein except for this part so sometimes they call it what second liver because it has its own blood supply it has its own blood drainage so if there's any problem with hepatic vein we get we call it butcher syndrome which will lead to a the paramagaly pain there we were there the acidness and there might be what later on they can develop cirrhosis but it can make cirrhosis in all the lobe except caudate lobe because it has its own blood supply it will be having its own blood drainage so we call it caudate lobe as secondary liver for secondary liver individual clear